China. Let's let's talk about whether we still uh, think there are viable uh, investment securities in China. In, in light of what we've seen happening with Russia and sanctions, and China's sort of nondescript, or they haven't chosen. I guess they've chosen a side, but not as they seem to be treading very lightly on on whether or not they go all in on their new BFFs in in, in Russia. And I would I would suggest that they tread lightly because we've excused a lot from China. Our, our corporations have excused a lot already. They were kind of flying under the radar when they really shouldn't be flying under the radar. Yeah, I think this is the key question, Joe. Uh, it, when you think about fiduciary responsibility in U.S. institutional investors, uh, historically, they were willing to just turn a blind eye and, and follow the MSCI inclusion of various countries and indices and blindly uh, invest in these despotic regimes uh, and just just basically take the Char Sergeant Schultz defense uh, of, of no, I know nothing uh, until something goes poorly. What Putin has just taught the institutional investment community is that entire countries should be considered uninvestable. Uh, I know everyone thought Spurbank and Gazprom and many of the other Russian companies uh, were, quote, cheap from a, an international perspective and from an investment standard. And I realize China tantalizes the world with their potential growth, the 1.4 billion Chinese at the end of the rainbow that everyone wants to sell something to. But in the end, what Putin just taught us is we need to look at the despotic autocrats and we need to really rethink if the negative convexity or the negative risk that we're associating uh, with these potential uh, countries uh, is worth the investment. Or more importantly, if you're doing your exercising your proper fiduciary duty, they call it the prudent man standard. So one could argue that when you're investing in a country uh, who won't submit their companies to standard audits, whose leader can literally uh, decimate entire industries at a whim, like China did in the last 12 months with for-profit education, tech, healthcare, you name it. Um, and now you've got uh, the last two secretaries of state in the United States saying that China's committing, uh, you know, crimes against humanity and, and genocide. The, again, that sk that schism between Wall Street, DOD, and intelligence uh, in the U.S. has never been wider. And I think institutional investors' fiduciary responsibilities. Uh, need to be brought into the light because anyone invested in Russia just lost everything. And as you say, China's on that razor's edge. If they decide to give uh, 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 Russia any kind of military support, and if they make the wrong decision in actually siding with Russia here uh, uh, overtly and submit themselves to sanctions by the U.S., then all of U.S. investment in China is now suspect. And I, I, would, I would be willing to posit that the people that have huge private equity investments, multi-billion dollar investments in China, uh, are very worried about their ability to ever get that money back now. And that was never a thought going in. And now it's a, now it's a very serious thought. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.